this morning we've got a nice breeze of 10 or 12 knots out of the northeast and we're heading northwest so it's on the beam, the seas are really low, we're just leaving behind the Turks and Caicos and heading over to Mayaguana and we can clear in there in the Bahamas. Have you ever wanted to have a tropical island to yourself? Is it really possible today? We think the Bahamas is one of the few cruising destinations where this is quite possible. The Plena Keys lie 20 miles from the nearest settlement and they're uninhabited. Love the out islands of the Bahamas. We have perfect calm conditions for coming into East Plena Key today. And we have not only the beach to ourselves, but the entire island. Christopher Columbus might be one of the first people to visit this island. One theory is that this was Columbus' first landfall in the Caribbean. We can't get over the fabulous color of the water and the miles of white sand beach. There is an offline reef, so we anchor outside and bring the dinghy into shore. Our next stop is Acklands Island, where we anchor at Atwood Harbour. Acklands has a few small settlements, totaling just 500 people, spread over 150 square miles. No one drops by the anchorage over the two days we stay. The mile-long beach is all to ourselves. Deserted island? Check. Clear blue water? Check. Trade wind breeze in the Casarina trees? Check. One mile long beach with perfect sand for running. This sand is the whitest we've seen anywhere, apparently because it's made up mainly of oolite, fine granules that precipitate out of the warm, shallow waters. There are somewhere between 700 and 2,000 islands and small keys it is pretty easy to find a beach or a whole island to yourself. What a treat to sail in this amazing shallow water here in the southern Bahamas today between the Exuma Island chain and Long Island. Here the water is two and a half to three meters deep, eight or nine feet, and we're seeing the white sand bottom. So the light we are seeing has traveled down eight feet and back up through a total of 16 feet of water to our eyes. This accounts for the light turquoise color as much of the red light has been absorbed. We can actually use this to judge the depth of the water as the lighter colors mean less depth. I find the best way to learn is to use the depth sounder to confirm your guesses as to the water depth, and you can then compare the water color where you are with the water up ahead and whether it is lighter or darker turquoise. Look at this water, oh my goodness. We're in about uh, six feet of water here. I was hoping to careen the boat as a chance we can maybe sneak in there and beach it. We need to get and fix the propeller shaft bearing. It's, it's uh, not only vibrating, but it seems to be kind of slipping out. And I can't fix it by diving, so I'm hoping we can careen the boat. Careening is something that people used to do in the old days with ships, when uh, boats couldn't be lifted by modern lifts we have. You basically find a high tide and go in toward some soft sandy beach or mud, wait for the tide to go down and that leaves the bottom of the boat exposed to work on it. But the tide isn't quite high enough today for careening, so we just explore this magical area. We sneak into the middle of this offshore sandbank and drop the hook in a pool that should still be six feet deep at low tide. Then we put the dinghy in to go and explore as the tide goes down exposing a wonderland of white sand.
Some pirates based themselves in the Bahamas as most islands were uninhabited, and with the vast areas of shallow seas, it was very difficult for the larger and deeper naval ships to track the smaller pirate vessels. By the late 1600s, the Bahamas had become a haven for pirates. They proclaimed Nassau a pirate republic and established themselves as governors. Calico Jack, Anne Bonny, Charles Vane, and the infamous Edward Teach, a.k.a. Blackbeard, were all here. Okay, stop. I can imagine them learning these tricky waters and hiding out until they spot a target to plunder. We've been out in deserted islands for weeks now and we need to plunder a grocery store. Time to sail on to Elizabeth Harbor and Georgetown. Second World War, the United States built a seaplane base here in Great Exuma's large harbor. The superb protection of Elizabeth Harbor meant calm waters for landing planes in virtually any conditions. The same protection that cruising sailors appreciate as a calm anchorage in lovely surroundings. After the end of the war, the base was closed again, and now the area is just lightly developed. Stocking Island forms the other side of this three-mile-long harbor and is a great place to wander and explore. Thanks for coming aboard to visit our favorite sailing destination of the Bahamas. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your sailing friends. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Are you interested in the cruising lifestyle? Are you planning to sail away on a cruising adventure? Or researching cruising areas and destinations? Distant Shores is a television series about the cruising life with lots of tips for sailors planning to sail away. This is Oswego, New York. We are entering the Erie Canal system and this will take us all the way from Lake Ontario to the Hudson River, which gets us to New York City. Plus destination information to help you make your cruising plans. Yeah, I can stand on the bottom. We've been filming distant shores for nearly 15 years and know the fun and challenges of the cruising life. We've made distant shores with you in mind. We include plenty of cruising tips in this travel series, as well as lifestyle segments and hints for sailors heading to exotic destinations. Encouragement for you and your crew to get out cruising. Destinations include the Intracoastal Waterway, the Bahamas, Caribbean, the Mediterranean, Scandinavia, Transatlantic Passage Making, the French Canals and more. <laughs>